What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfect Netus, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the last video, we talked about the characteristics of Clostridium tetany. We talked about the toxin known as titanospasmin, and we talked about the mechanism of that toxin, which is the inhibition of GABA release. When you inhibit the release of an inhibitory neurotransmitter, you are being excitatory. Inhibition of inhibition is excitation. The loss of a loss is a gain. The negative of a negative is a positive. Decrease the release of an inhibitory neurotransmitter will lead to excitation, known as spasticity. And that's how you get the locked jaw, the sardonic smile, and the opisthotonus, which is hyperextension of your back. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. Can a non-toxigenic strain of Clostridium tetany be converted into a toxigenic strain? The answer is no. Why not? Because the plasmid that carries the gene for the tetanospasmin, which is the toxin of Clostridium tetany, is a non-conjugative plasmin, i.e. you cannot conjugate, i.e. you cannot transfer the code for the toxin from one bacterial cell to another bacterial cell. How does the tetanospasmin work? By inhibiting the release of GABA. When I inhibit the release of an inhibitory neurotransmitter, I get excitatory. Excitation known as spastic paralysis. Please watch the videos in this microbiology and infectious diseases playlist in order. Clostridium tetany, as we have discussed before, is a gram-positive rod, spore-forming, strictly anaerobic, yet motile. Clostridium tetany causes a disease known as tetanus. So again, Clostridium tetany is a gram-positive rod, spore-forming, anaerobic, yet motile. Can it make a spore? Absolutely, which is protective to the bacteria from unfavorable circumstances. Here is the structure of the spore, here is the function of the spore. The classic definitions, which is not very accurate, of Clostridia include a gram-positive organism that is strictly anaerobic, produces endospores, and an organism that's unable to reduce sulfate into sulfite. They are problematic to human beings because they are all over the place around you. They can make spores, they can make toxins, and they can grow and multiply even when there is no oxygen. Now let's talk about tetanus, which is caused by Clostridium tetany, which has the toxin known as tetanospasmin, which is an AB toxin. A is active, it has the enzymatic activity, namely zinc endopeptidase which breaks down peptides you can also call it zinc metalloprotease that's the a part which is active which has the enzymatic activity but the b part is the heavy chain and the sulfur carbohydrate binding binding of the toxin to your carbohydrate on the surfaces of your cells such as your motor neurons in your central nervous system once it binds your cell receptors on your motor neurons in your central nervous system, it will be transported by retrograde axonal transport to the soma of your motor neurons in the central nervous system. Then it will leave the cell membrane of your soma, of your neuron, of your central nervous system and will enter your cytosol. Thank you, endosome. Thank you, B subunit, for binding with the cell receptor. The B subunit is done. Let's talk about the A subunit, which has the enzyme activity, zinc metalloprotease, which will cleave and break down, because it's a protease, your protein known as snare proteins. What was the function of the snare proteins? May they rest in peace. They used to release GABA, or the neurotransmitter, from the presynaptic neuron to the synaptic cleft. But when you break down snare by proteolysis, you have no snare, you cannot release GABA, you cannot release an inhibitory neurotransmitter. When you cannot release an inhibitory, you are being excitatory. Too much excitation is called spasms. Spasms of your jaw or locked jaw called trismus, spasms of your facial muscles, rhesus sardonicus with the classic sardonic smile, and hyperextension, hyperarching of your back, apistotinus. And don't forget that the binding of tetanospasmin to your neurons is irreversible. The only chance that you may recover from this is if you make brand new terminal axon knobs with brand new snares that have not been inhibited by the nasty tetanospasmin. So far, all of this was discussed in the last video. Don't forget that tetanospasmin decreases GABA release. 
Now let's talk about the disease known as tennis. Cause the infective organism, the gram-positive rod, the bacterium known as Clostridium tenni, which enters to your body and after an incubation period which lasts days or weeks, I will start to suffer from symptoms. Oh, by the way, the length of this incubation period depends on the distance between the site of entry to your body and the central nervous system. The closer the site of entry to your central nervous system, the shorter the incubation period because the organism will have less time needed to reach your central nervous system. The shorter the distance, the shorter the incubation period. The longer the distance, the longer the incubation period. Okay, medicosis, we get it. What kind of symptoms will I develop from tennis? Well, you have three types of tennis. There is the localized tetanus causing the localized symptoms at the site of entry or just around it. So if we're talking muscle spasms, just muscle spasms around the site of entry. But there is another one which is rapidly fatal and doctors have no idea how to treat it, which is cephalic tetanus, where the primary site of the tetanus infection was in your brain. It started in your brain. Oh, oops that has a very bad prognosis. Third, which is the most common subtype of tetanus, is the generalized tetanus all over your body, symptoms everywhere. We're talking motor symptoms and sometimes even autonomic symptoms. Because remember that GABA is present in the motor nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. You inhibit GABA in the motor nervous system, I get hyperexcitation. Spasticity, spasticity in my jaw called lock jaw or trismus which is spasticity of the masseter muscle to be specific. By the way, this is the strongest skeletal muscle in the entire human body. I did not say it's the largest, I said it's the strongest. Hey, medicosis, what's the strongest smooth muscle in the human body? Probably the uterus, very strong. And that's why its contractions can be very painful. Next, spasticity of my facial muscles causing the classic sardonic smile or rhesus sardonicus. Third, spasticity of the muscles of the back causing hyperextension of the back, a phenomenon known as opisthotonus. Yes, I know that you have normal curvature in your back, but here I'm talking about extra curvature like this. This is how your back looks like. Here is anterior and here is posterior. This is known as what? Opisthotonus. When you see these symptoms, do not wait for lab results. You can already treat for tetanus. Speaking of autonomic symptoms, we're talking about sweating. Too much sweating causes too much loss of fluids, and I will end up with extra cellular fluid volume depletion, a term that is more accurate than dehydration, because dehydration just means loss of water. But when you're losing water and salt, this is volume depletion. Also, autonomic problems will lead to fluctuations of your blood pressure. It goes up and down, up and down for no reason. This is tetanus, but there is a special subtype of tetanus known as neonatal tetanus, which happens around birth. When most of us were agrarians working in village tillage, there were no hospitals in sight. How do you think we delivered babies? By calling the ambulance? Give me a break. We used to call a person in the village who, quote, specialized in newborn delivery. This person was always equipped with hot water and a sharp knife. And since Clostridium tetany is ubiquitous in the soil and in water, the knife was probably contaminated with Clostridium tetany. Cut the umbilical cord of the baby with a knife and you have introduced Clostridium tetany into an open wound. This wonderful baby will develop neonatal tetanus with a mortality rate of greater than 90%. Please do not cut the baby's umbilical cord with a kitchen knife or any other knife that's not sterilized. Remember that the tetanospasmin is heat labile. When the hospital uses brand new equipment or equipment that have previously been sterilized using warm, hot water, you're killing the tetanospasmin. And the autoclave is even better than boiling water because the autoclave can raise the temperature up to about 121 degrees Celsius, which is way higher than 100 degrees of boiling water. How can we diagnose tetanus? Clinically, clinically, clinically. Do not wait for the labs. If you see the spasticity, the rhesus sardonicus, the opisthotonus, the trismus, the abnormal sweating, ECF volume depletion, and changes and fluctuations in blood pressure with a relevant 
history, go ahead and start the treatment. Do not wait for the stupid lab because the cultures are negative in most cases. Why not? Because Clostridium tetany is difficult to culture. Why? Because oxygen, just one molecule of oxygen, can ruin your entire culture. Because remember, these organisms are strictly anaerobes. They cannot stand oxygen. And it is very difficult, practically speaking, to avoid being exposed to a single molecule of oxygen. This requires some very sophisticated techniques not present in many labs. Moreover, even in the rare circumstance that the Clostridium tetany appears on culture, they do not grow as robust, discrete colonies that are easily visible. Nope, they grow as a very thin film on the surface of the agar. If you, as a physician, do not use your brain, you're just dependent on your lab technician, and if your lab technician has astigmatism in the left eye and severe glaucoma in the right eye, say goodbye to your patient. The diagnosis is made clinically, please. Okay, Medicosis, so you've told me it's very difficult to find the bacteria, but can I find the toxin in the lab? The answer is yes. We use something called the Tetanus Antitoxin Neutralization Test, which is a neutralization test or interaction between the toxin of tetanus and an antitoxin prepared in mice. Yes, this test works, but it's not available in most labs. There are many countries where this test is only available in one lab or less. Medicosis prevention is better than cure. How can I prevent tetanus? Vaccination. Three doses of the tetanus toxoid plus a booster every 10 years. Okay, Medicosis, it's too late. I have tetanus right now. How can I treat it? Well, the site of entry, i.e. the primary wound, the site of the primary infection, needs surgical debridement. But hey, Medicosis, it looks okay. It doesn't look terrible to me. Do I still need to debreed it? Yes, indeed, you still need to debreed it because it will inhibit your GABA neurons in your CNS very soon. You need to debreed it because when you debreed it, you get rid of the bacteria and when you get rid of the bacteria you will decrease the release and the production of future toxins and you might even get rid of some already formed toxins so yes you need surgical debridement next you need some antibiotics such as penicillin and metronidazole they are not antitoxins they will not get rid of the already formed toxins they are antibiotics. Bio means life. They get rid of the Clostridium tetany. When you get rid of Clostridium tetany, it will not make toxins in the future. Some people argue that metronidazole is better than penicillin when it comes to tetanus treatment. Why is that medicosis? Because penicillin might inhibit GABA release from the inhibitory interneurons. And what did the tetanus spasmin do? It also decreased GABA release from the inhibitory neurons. That's why metronidazole is better. Passive immunization by human tetanus immunoglobulin. Why is this? Because it's immunoglobulin. It's an antibody against the tetanus toxin, so it will neutralize the toxin and rendering the toxin ineffective. Okay, medicosis, it will inhibit the unbound toxin, but how about the bound toxin? Remember, please, that once the tetanus binds to your neuron, it's irreversible. You cannot neutralize this. All right, medicosis. Now, once I get an infection, I'm immune for life, right? And uh, not necessarily. Many patients, after developing tetanus, fail to make adequate level of anti-tetanus antibodies. So you still need the vaccine after the infection. And also remember, at any time in your life, if you step on a rusty nail, please go talk to a doctor before I see your sardonic smile. Let's review Clostridium tetany from Picmonic. Clostridium tetany, here is Titanic, is a gram positive, here is my angel, bacillus, here is the rod, obligate anaerobe, here is the ant in a robe, releases exotoxin, here is the toxin coming out of the balloon. The toxin is called tetanospasmin, which inhibits the release of GABA and glycine, the inhibitory neurotransmitters, from your Renshaw cell, which is an inhibitory interneuron in your central nervous system. The decreased release of inhibitory neurotransmitter will lead to hyperexcitation, spasticity. We're talking trismus or lock jaw. We're talking the sardonic smile, rhesus sardonicus, and hyperextension of the back, opisthotonus. 
In the next video, we'll talk about botulism. If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course, which comes with 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, of course, my perfectionist ultimate notebook, and a mind map to help you memorize these antibiotics. Learn more about metronidazole and penicillin in this course, medicosisperfectionitis.com. I also have an otacoids pharmacology course to teach you about the antacids and the anti-asthma medications, the serotonin system, histamine system, etc. And the glory of the glories, the acid-base imbalance course, the best on the planet. Learn about the serum anion gap, the urine anion gap, the serum osmotic gap, the stool osmotic gap, etc. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.